Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to continue covering games from Parachin Open and today I'll show you a game in which I finally attacked and played aggressively and I'm very happy with this game. Okay, so I played pawn to e4, uh, my opponent played e5 and I'd prepared for this game. I was expecting e5 and after knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, the Italian, my opponent played knight to f6. And originally I'd intended to go for quieter lines with d3, but uh, in my preparation I decided to try something out for the first time, which I've never played before. So knight g5, this I was, I've been playing for the last four years, but after d5, e d5, knight a5, bishop b5, c6, takes, takes. Uh, here I've been playing bishop e2 or bishop to d3 only. And for the first time in this game, I decided to try out queen to f3, the Bogolyubov. And this is a very aggressive move. Uh, arguably, it's worse than bishop d3. Uh, it's also worse than bishop e2. But practically speaking, uh, it's way more complicated to play than either of those two, two moves. And as opposed to bishop e2, white has uh, a more aggressive setup and does not defend as in bishop e2 lines. And as opposed to bishop to d3, white goes for aggressive play instead of conceding to a positional weakness with doubled pawns and d file. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the main move for black here is rook to b8. It is possible to play bishop e7 or h6 or even queen to c7, but my opponent uh, went for rook to b8, which is the main line. Now the bishop is attacked and it has to move. Uh, the most popular move here is bishop to d3. Uh, I should say that taking the pawn leads to extreme complications in which black is always better if he knows what he's doing. So you are two pawns up, but the bishop is coming to b7, the rook is coming to b4, and black's pieces are so active that your pawns don't matter. Instead of bishop uh, to d3 or bishop takes pawn, I played a very rare move which I'd prepared in, in detail for this game, and that's bishop to e2. Now, this is a weird move. Uh, because it does not prevent pawn to e4 uh, in, in many lines and it's more passive than bishop to d3 but it has a lot of venom and I'll show you what happened we played what are the best moves for, for the next few moves so bishop to e7 knight to e4 is the idea you want to exchange off uh, this great knight and then play pawn to d3 so knight d5 d4 and now uh, with my bishop on e2, of course, I'm, I'm able to play pawn to d4. That's the whole idea of, of the move. And this pawn can never be taken. If the pawn is taken, I simply have queen to g3, attacking the rook, attacking the pawn on g7. And if, for example, bishop to f5, defending the rook, attacking my knight, I can take on g7, rook f8, and now knight b to d2. And of course, of course, I'm, I'm better. And this should be winning for white. So on d4, there's only one move that black can play, and that's pawn to f5, attacking my knight and preparing to expand in the center if given the opportunity. So now knight ec3, and knight to b4, attacking the c2 pawn and attacking my rook. So knight a3. And this is the critical position, which uh, I knew. Uh, my opponent, I think, didn't know it because he blundered here. Now it's it's very complicated and it's extremely hard to understand everything that's going on here unless you've prepared in advance. But basically what black should do is win a pawn and accept the fact that white has uh, tremendous activity as opposed to black having it in most lines of the two knights. So what black should do is queen takes pawn, white castles, black castles, rook to d1, all of my pieces activating, queen to b6, and now knight to c4. And after knight c4, bishop c4 check, king h8, I simply go queen e2, uh, controlling the a6 square, controlling this knight, and the best move for black is bishop a6, after which we exchange everything, 
and my rook gets into d7 and this should be more than enough compensation for the pawn uh, or excuse me not even a pawn yeah sorry i just gave a pawn back on d4 this should be very good uh, for 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 white there have been several games played from this position and white scores well instead of that instead of taking the pawn back with queen takes d4 my opponent got greedy and he played e takes d4 and as i said this pawn on d4 can really never be taken because queen g3 once again attacking the rook attacking the pawn on g7 now if the rook moves in this position then queen takes g7 is even more powerful because i have bishop h5 and castles and rook e1 and his position simply collapses so the rook cannot be moved uh, the pawn cannot be defended unless black castles so he castled and even though I knew this had to be good for white, I still had to spend a ton of time analyzing this position before I took on b8. I knew the pattern, but I didn't know it in this exact position. And in some lines, my queen could get trapped. I took nonetheless after about 20 minutes to it. So queen takes b8. Now the critical move, which we both had to calculate, which he was counting on, I believe, is bishop to d6. And after bishop d6, queen a7, you may think that c5 uh, wins for black or wins the queen, but I have knight a4. And if he ever tries something like rook f7, then simply queen to b6, and I either win the knight or trade queens. In both cases, I win. If bishop to c7, then queen takes c5. So uh, bishop to d6 doesn't work. I've basically won a rook. So he either has to take on c3 or attack like a madman to justify uh, the sacrifice. So he took on c3. And now, of course, if I take back, then I am in trouble because bishop d6, etc. So I just brought my queen back to g3. This has to be correct. Knight d5, uh, defending the pawn, activating the knight, maybe preparing f4, maybe bishop d6. I simply castled. Now my king is safe, I'm the exchange up. Bishop to d6, queen to f3, queen to f6, and now <coughs> this is the second critical position. I have two ways to trade pieces, uh, knight b5 or knight c4. Uh, I Originally I'd intended to play knight b5, but this gets very complex. So knight b5, of course, if he takes, I take on, on d5. But he has bishop h2 check, and after king h2, queen e5 check, king g1, cb5. I wasn't really happy with this. Uh, I wasn't really sure what was going on in this position. I probably have to take bc3 and then knight c3, bishop d3. I'm giving back the exchange maybe. I, I wasn't sure about this. So I went for something much cleaner. I, I went for knight c4. And now he has to trade one of the pieces. Uh, my pawn b2 is still defended. And after knight takes c4, bishop takes c4, he still doesn't have time to, to take on b2. Because I can take on uh, d5. And then in the end, after bishop b2, queen b2, the bishop on d6 is hanging. So he played bishop to e6. And here I made a mistake, uh, and I actually knew that I shouldn't play this move, and what was going through my mind was, oh, this is going to be a mistake, but it seems the simplest. And I took on d5. What I should do, uh, and what I'd intended originally, is pawn to b3, uh, simply stopping any nonsense here, and if f4... Then rook e1 activating, maybe bishop to f7, and now simply a4, bishop a3. That's my plan. I, I want to trade off the dark squared bishop. And this should be the best way to play. It's still tricky because maybe g5, king h8, rook g8, g4, etc. Uh, instead of that, I, I took on d5. And after bishop takes d5, I took on c3. And this is what I'd intended. However, after queen h4, the position gets tricky. Uh, I cannot play g3 uh, 
uh, or at least I thought I couldn't. It seems way too risky. I don't think I can play h3 either. I'd intended to play queen to h3, which I thought was fine. However, I missed a detail which I'd found in my analysis after the game. So in this position, uh, if he plays queen e4, what, what he did play, not trading queens, then bishop d2 I have developed, everything is safe and my position is fine. But on queen h3 he can actually take g h3 and then rook f6. And if I don't play f3 now, then I lose the game to, to rook g6. So I have to play f3, and now bishop c5 check, king h1, bishop c4 attacks the rook, rook e1, and bishop d5. And actually this is a draw because I have to repeat, I have to play rook f1, I have no other options. So I missed that I would have to repeat after queen takes h3. Luckily, he missed it too. Uh, queen e4, bishop d2, rook f6, seems risky for me seems tricky but actually rook a1 and everything is fine queen takes c2 and not bishop c3 but queen c3 and now the queen is getting away from my king which is a good thing uh, he threw in rook g6 of course if i take the queen then rook g2 is a mate in a few moves I have to play f3 and now the queen retreats and now that the queen is slightly offside I actually have time to, to expand and to consolidate. So b4, queen b5, uh, queen e3, activating my queen, threatening to dislodge his bishop as well. If he's forced to play bishop f8, then he truly has nothing in this position. And if he takes on, on b4, then takes, takes, and queen e8 forces uh, a queen trade. He played c5, uh, I played a3, he played king f7, and now I actually played a4, uh, because if he takes it, I can take on c5. He played queen c6, I expanded with b5, and queen back to c8. And now that I have this nice pawn duo and the potential to create a passed pawn, uh, apart from having the extra exchange, I actually have uh, another advantage, which is a potential queen. Uh, I played bishop to c3, activating my bishop rook to h6 and now again I, I i made a mistake what i should do is I, I should simplify and there's basically no way for my opponent to to punish the simplification i need to play bishop to e5 and after this i don't think he can decline the trades rook e6 simply runs into queen c3 or queen f4 uh, yeah, I think this is the cleanest. Instead, I went for h3. Uh, he played queen to d7. Uh, I played rook to d1, attacking the bishop. The bishop went to b3. And I played rook to d2. I don't really mind him taking my queen side pawns because if he moves his bishop uh, to b5, then there's going to be tr tremendous pressure on d6. Bishop a4 anyway. Rook e1, activating everything. Bishop takes b5 and now queen to g5. Uh, again, instead of queen g5, I should play bishop to, to e5 now. And after rook e6, which is the only sensible move, simply rook takes d6. And uh, yeah, if, if rook d6, I take it. If queen d6, I take it. And this is a clean rook up. I mean, there was nothing there. Instead, Another mistake, uh, I played queen g5, which seemed uh, better to me. Of course, I saw rook g6, and then queen h4, uh, attacking h7, still attacking on e7. And my opponent played h6, which, again, I didn't punish immediately, but I have to play queen h5, and now I'm, I'm just winning on the spot, I'm winning a piece. So, for example, a6, and bishop e5, and, and, and that's it. He, he can resign queen e7, rook d6, game over. Yeah, uh, but I played rook e to d1, uh, which now gives him the opportunity to, to use his rook still. Uh, luckily for me, the position is so hard for him to play and he's so much worse 
that I can win in a million different ways. He played bishop a4 here. And now there's a simple tactic that, that wins the game, and that's rook d6. Uh, rook d6, rook d6, queen d6, queen a4, and this is over. Uh, the end game wasn't quick, but it wasn't hard to convert. Queen e7, queen f4. My advantage is basically that his g7 pawn is permanently weak and that it's usually hanging with the mate in a few moves. And he also has to decline the queen trades because my bishop is always in time to defend against both the a pawn and the c pawn. h4 quickly, uh, starting to advance. c4, king h2, queen f7, uh, king h3, king h7, g3. I just need to gain space and advance until he is basically in Zugzwang. King g6, queen d6 check. g4, queen g4, h5. And now that I've played h5, this becomes much simpler. King g8, queen g6. Of course, he has to keep declining the queen trades. Queen c7, f4, queen e7, bishop e5, cutting his queen off. Has to keep declining the trades, f5, and now it's over. Uh, he has no easy way to, to decline the queen trade. Uh, if he moves the queen away, then at least I have queen d5 and taking the c4 pawn. He played c3, which doesn't work. Queen e6, c2, takes, takes, and bishop to b2. And now I simply have to patiently bring my king up the board, put him in Zugzwang and win the end game. And this is how it happened. Yeah, once I get my king to e6, it's over. King h8, king f7. He has to start giving up pawns. And here he resigned. Yeah, I finally played an aggressive game. Uh, again, it wasn't easy for him to play, but I think he should have spent more time before in this position playing e takes d4. I mean, this is a pattern he must have noticed, uh, but basically e d loses the game. It's not easy for white to win. As you saw, I made several mistakes, gave my opponent a chance for a draw, but still it's, it's the exchange up for basically nothing uh, if you don't get made. Okay, uh, yeah, finally a game I was happy to show you. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you tomorrow with the next round and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.